you have to train, you have to keep your reflexes so that when you want it, it's there. What happens in life, we get so attached to this. Then we're like, oh, we're fighting over this, like, I want to fight over this. This obstacle, we always focus on the process, but we no longer focus on the outcome. Your body's like, I don't have it in me to do this. <laughs> and I don't believe that. Want to be happy? Build a life, not just a business. Living that believe life. Out here, living that believe life. Every day we live in that believe life. Also, like we live in that believe life. Living life, yeah, so we're grinding it out. Every single day we'll be grinding it out. Also, like we live in that believe life. Oh, that believe life. Oh. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you too. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. So today, let's live your best belief life and learn the five lessons that everyone can learn from martial arts. Okay, let's kick it off with lesson number one, get humility and discipline with Jocko Willink. I remember, you know, one of the things that uh, stuck with me is I had a guy that was a traditional martial artist, very, very great guy, you know, and actually was a SEAL. And he was a traditional martial artist. And, you know, I was like a basic jujitsu guy at the time. And, you know, we decided to figure out which one worked better, right? And, you know, so it was me as a year long jujitsu guy against a guy that had been training in his martial art for 20 years. He's, you know, older than me, bigger than me. And of course, jujitsu won because jujitsu is better. And so then, of course, you get the, well, let's go again. And that's what happens with jujitsu. You know, when you get somebody once, they think, oh, that was, you got lucky or whatever. So then you go again. And it usually takes, it usually takes uh, three to five times before people recognize that, okay, there's something here that I don't understand. And this is a superior, this person will beat me. And so we got through the three to five repetitions of me submitting him. And he's, so now he's kind of a little bit frustrated and flustered and bummed out because in his reality is hitting him that he's, he's wasted 20 years of his life training in this stuff that doesn't work. And so in, as he was scratching to kind of find what he could hold on to, he said to me, well, the thing about, you know, what I do is it's not just about fighting. It teaches you discipline and humility. And at the time, you know, I was a young, stupid kid and I was like, whatever, uh, you know, I'll still beat you up. So it doesn't matter. And, but I took, I held on to that and I thought about it. And as I continued to train jujitsu more and more, and especially when I started working with kids, I realized that what the other older traditional martial arts did to train you in humility and discipline and things of that nature, jujitsu absolutely teaches you humility because you will get submitted by people on a regular basis, people that are smaller than you, people that are weaker than you, and that is a very humbling experience. So you will absolutely learn humility through jujitsu and the discipline piece. It, it absolutely takes discipline to go and get on that mat on a daily basis and improve yourself. And if you know, there's some saying about getting your black belt and it's a very, very tiny percentage of people that start jujitsu that get their black belt. And that's because it takes discipline. And if you don't have discipline and you don't learn discipline, you'll never get there. So those kind of con conceptual things that they had in traditional martial arts, uh, I think they're, and, and as the traditional martial arts lost their realism, they held on to these conceptual ideas that are found in jujitsu, in Muay Thai, in wrestling. They're found there um, because they're real and they're a real element of them. And that's a, another reason beyond self-defense to to train martial arts. Lesson number two, focus on the outcome and structure with Dan Locke. Now in Wing Chun, we have a lot of trapping techniques, right? Trapping techniques, meaning I throw a punch to Peter. So here I have an obstacle. So from here, I see the straight line say, okay, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit Peter in the chin here, but boom, I have an obstacle. But what happens in life, we get so attached to this. Then we're like, oh, we're fighting over this. Like, I wanna fight over this. 
this obstacle, we always focus on the process, but we no longer focus on the outcome. The outcome is not the, the hand. The, fo the focus is here. These are the branches. We want to focus on the trees, right? So in Wing Chun, in Chinese, we talk about zhou ying, ba zhou xiao, means we chase the main, the figure, not the hands. We only do trapping when there's an obstacle. So when there's an obstacle, we can trap and we can hit. Right? So we are not thinking about the hand. It's just, I try to hit, I try to hit, there's an obstacle, then I can trap and I can punch. Right? So I focus on the outcome. We don't lose sight of the outcome. Sometimes you're competing with a company that is much bigger, that's got more resources, that's got more capital, they have more people, right? They have a better brand. Well, as a smaller company, how do you beat a bigger guy, right? You can do that with strength. Look at, let me look at those guns. I mean, they're pretty big, right? <laughs> so if you're facing a guy with like 150 pounds, 100, 200 pounds, 150 pounds, and depends on your size. If you have strength versus strength, you're gonna lose. So Wing Chun is designed to, for the, to, for the little guys, to beat the bigger guys. And you do, don't do that with strength, you do that with structure. So let me give you a perfect example. If I was to, like push with Peter, right? I'm like using my muscle and like pushing him. He's pushing me like, right, right. right? You can see that again, right? Because I have no structure. My structure is off, right? However, if I have the proper, let's say, Wing Chun structure, right? And then instead of fighting force with force, my structure, my shoulders relax, right? And then I, as he's slowly giving me pressure, right? Now this relax more, a little bit more. Yeah, continue, continue. See, now the f because my structure gives me strength, all his force is now transferred to the ground, like this, right? A little bit more, lean a little bit more, right? So it's not strength, right? It's not strength, right? It's just this, you see, this is relaxed. This is, I'm not doing this, see, I'm not doing this, right? See that, see that? So structure, but if my structure is wrong, let's say my structure push, see that? My structure is wrong. So structure over strength. Also, if you want to have more confidence and self-love, check out my 254 series. It's free. The links to join are in the description below. People want to know how to stop the laziness and they want to know how to stop the procrastination. So that's a problem with young people. You're not good at anything. Oh, I'm so good. No, tell me the truth. You're not good at anything. It's good to treat other people the way you would like to be treated yourself. It's like a golden rule and there's a reason for it. And that reason is that we're connected. Lesson number three, get disciplined and destroy stress with Joe Rogan. Most of what people do is what we're doing right now. Most of what people do is sit down. But is that because they don't feel like running around? Because some people, like people who exercise, generally you have to put in a little bit of effort to make yourself go exercise. But a lot of people who are overweight and sick don't have enough energy to do that. I don't know about that. Um, some of them maybe, but I think some of them just don't have discipline. There's an issue with that as well. There's also an issue with momentum. You're not used to doing it. It's not a part of your life. It's not something that you're accustomed to pushing yourself. There's been many, 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 many days where I didn't want to work out. I just didn't feel like I had the energy and I just forced myself. And I think there's very few people out there that know how to force themselves. That's a learned, yeah. that's a learned skill. It's yeah. a, that, that kind of discipline and focus. You have to have like real rigid requirements of yourself where you don't allow yourself to back out of things and you don't allow yourself to slack off. And I don't think people put those kind of requirements on themselves as if it's, um, it, it is a, a, a daily principle of life, like what you must get done. You know, you must brush your teeth, yeah, you must yeah. exercise for 45 minutes. And if you did that, I think you'd be healthier and happier and you, your body would perform more smoothly. And you, if you require your body to do things like that, I think it rises to the occasion. There are very few people that have that kind of discipline. So because of that, they come up with excuses. And excuses are a giant part of the problem. It's not simply a physical health issue. There's also mental aspects of it. And discipline's a big one. I just know way too many people who are weak mentally. And I, 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 can't, I can't just chalk it off to only, you know, their physical, the, the way they physically feel. Because I felt like shit a hundred times. And then I worked out, and then I felt way better. Yeah. It's just, it's just a fact of life. That's real. You know, you just got to... Yeah, yeah. And I, people don't know how to do that. And it's not... A, and if you're used to doing this, get in your car, sit down, drive to the office, sit down, go to the lunch, sit down, you know, go to the board meeting, sit down. Get in your car on, on the way home, sit down, get home in front of the TV, sit down. 
then go to the gym, f off. They don't have any energy. You know, their, their body's not, their, their body's like, I don't have it in me to do this. <laughs> And I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think it's, it's a lot of it is the, the mindset. One of the things you said is that it's good to kind of explore your boundaries yeah. when it comes to fear. This is something actually that my meditation teacher has said to me before. And it made me realize, I think I need to get in there and start pushing it a little bit in this, um, in the tank, uh, because it will help me in lots of areas of my life. Because when you don't test those boundaries, your life becomes smaller and smaller yeah and that happens to people with panic it i think it well it happens just people in general and i think it's one of the reasons why people fall into panic is because they don't have enough experience with stressful situations to the point where they could just relax and just let it happen and that that's one of the things that i one of the reasons why i think martial arts training is very good for people not just for the self-defense aspect of it but for the aspect of just dealing with stressful situations on a regular basis to the point where you're very comfortable with them and then you realize that the consequences of this is it's not really as bad as you think it is like the, most people are terrified of physical confrontation but when you have physical confrontation on a regular basis especially through uh, my favorite, which is jujitsu training, because he, there's no striking, so you don't get hit in the head. You're not worried about brain damage or any of that stuff. It's just basically grappling. But that through the continual process of testing yourself and stress and regular life stresses sort of become diminished. Lesson number four, honestly express yourself with Bruce Lee. Ultimately, martial art means honestly expressing yourself. Now, it is very difficult to do. I mean, it is, it is easy for me to put on a show and be cocky yeah. and be flooded with a cocky feeling and then yeah. feel like pretty cool and all that. Or I can f make all kinds of phony things, you see what I mean? Blinded by it. Or I can show you some f really fancy movement. But to express oneself honestly, not lying to oneself, and to express myself honestly, not that my friend is very hard to do and you have to train you have to keep your reflexes so that when you want it it's there when you want to move you're moving and when you move you are determined to move not taking one inch not anything less than that if i want to punch i'm gonna do it man and i'm gonna do it you see so i mean so that is the type of thing you have to train yourself into it to become one with the you think and lesson number five, the last one before a very special bonus clip is learn to focus with Chuck Liddell. A lot of people, when we went to, I started learning karate, my, I went to an old school style where they, they trained old school ways, which is actually really good for my, my ADD, it was, was perfect because it actually trained me to control myself and be able to do, because it's trying to, you know, just be sit there in one place and do this 500 times in a row. Doesn't fit your personality. Was 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 tough, but I wanted it so bad. Got it. That I did it, and it trained me to be able to do that with other things, like be able to concentrate on a test or, and be able to focus when I need to. So I'm I got very good at focusing when I needed to, and I, from and I think a lot of it's from that style of teaching. Now I have a special bonus clip from Joe Rogan on how martial arts can eliminate anxiety that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that question of the day, I wanna know, have you tried martial arts? Have you found these benefits? Or do you want to try martial arts? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you made it this far in the video, I wanna celebrate you. Give me a hashtag, believe in the comments as well. And any um, long-term cardiovascular exercise, you get this. It's like we did, you know, last last October, we did the Sober October thing where we had a, this crazy fitness challenge. So all of us were doing cardio like five hours a day, like really crazy amounts of cardio. And one of the things that Tom Segura and I both agreed on is like the the amount of internal chatter dissipates to zero. Mm. Like you have no anxiety. It goes, mm. I didn't realize I had any anxiety until that happened. And then I was like, God, it goes to zero. It goes to nothing. Like when you do like five hours on a, a treadmill or you're just running, just run for five. When, you, when it's done, man, there's this like peace of mind that comes with that, this uh, release of endorphins that's incredibly addictive because that feeling is so pleasing. So it's not that it doesn't, it doesn't feel good to get out of bed and then to just push when you don't want to, but the end result feels amazing.
If you want to know how to start your day properly with Eric Thomas, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. I must break all barriers on my way, on my journey to wealth and success. I must break all barriers.